Good morning to all Facebook, Facebook friends and to all church members of Kingdom Faith Church. My name is Bishop Renteria. Uh, this is our Sunday morning service from our home here or our church. Amen. With me I have... And this is Gracie. Amen. Pastor Gracie. Hallelujah. How are you doing this morning? Gracie? Well, I woke up with allergies like crazy. You know, my eyes are burning and and uh, I think they're all red or something. But um, but I know as um, in a little while I'll be better. I'll be doing better. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I struggle with allergies all the time, so I understand exactly what she's uh, referring to. Well, we're glad that you're joining us this morning. We know that uh, on Wednesday we had to cancel service due to my Tia Mary's uh, rosary. Uh, we wanted to be with uh, my the family, my dad and my uncles and aunts, and and uh, you know uh, spend time with them. And, and we did, and we thank you for being so understanding. Mm -hmm. So this morning we're going to do the teaching that we were supposed to do on Wednesday, and is we're going to continue with uh, the series on dreams uh, this morning so I believe that's probably going to be the last one this is number four by the way mm -hmm. did you yeah did you have a scripture yes Some words? Uh, okay. thank you guys for joining us today and good morning and God bless you uh, this morning I'm going to read Philippians 4 verse 6 amen and the word of the Lord says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication yes, with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God, amen, amen. you know. And the peace of God, which suppresses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And, uh, you know, I just uh, like the way it says, be anxious for nothing. Oh, Lord. You know? Yeah, help us with that. <laughs> help us with that, because yeah. as we come to uh, before the Father, we're supposed to trust Him. You know, and sometimes in our flesh and, and our nat natural mind, you know, we're like, oh, my God, I got so many things. To do and there's so many things going wrong and there's so many things that I'm lacking and there's so many things that I need and we worry but here the word says be anxious for nothing you know why because when we go to prayer he's gonna help us amen and we just need to trust in him amen amen and um, and also that's a topic that I want to talk about on Monday night amen through the Bible study, the Bible study. Yeah, amen yes, praise right. the Lord I remember that I uh, talked to a church member and uh, I said, uh, mm -hmm. I, I see that you're complaining quite a bit. And they said, well, you know, yes. And I said, well, I'll give you some insight. Mm -hmm. Complain to the Lord. You can't go wrong there. Yeah. Did you hear me, church? Yeah. If you're going to complain, complain to, to the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That's why Paul says, be anxious for nothing. Yeah. And anxiousness produces, uh, you know, Stress, stress. stress produces, <laughs> you know, doubt. It produces uh, fear, uh, fear and, 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 you know, grumpiness and negativism and all that. So if you're going to complain, oh, man, God's got a big ear that you can complain to. Yeah. Well, Amen. you know, Beautiful I, scripture. my Monday night teaching is going to be geared at women, you know, because women tend to worry more about men, uh, more than men do. So uh, me as a female, hey, I know what uh, I know what it is. Amen. You know, we worry more. So my teaching on Monday night will be more about women and anxiety and worries. So join me Monday night, ladies. Invite your friends, especially someone that you feel might need to hear this word. You know, so um, I just want to speak some encouragement to them Monday night. Yes, and the and the way you can help us is that uh, you can share our videos, uh, and uh, that will help right other people listen to. Uh, what the Lord is saying to the churches through my ministry and the ministry of Pastor Gracie. We don't claim to be, you know, the top of the notch, but we do know that God has given us a word, yeah. and we do know that He wants us to release it, mm -hmm. and we do know that. Amen. So help us in that way by sharing the video uh, and by inviting your friends and relatives to uh, maybe join into uh, these uh, Sunday teachings, Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh, so I do know right there is that uh, all the videos are in uh, in our Facebook. Uh, yes, uh, the videos, yeah. the past videos we have been recording live, his uh, live yeah. Facebook streaming are under pay, uh, Bishop and Pastor Grace, uh, Pastor Lenteria. Amen. My Monday night videos are under Kingdom Faith Church. Amen. Amen. So, so then all yeah. they have to do is go back, uh, you know, and listen to whatever. Because I mean, I can't go through, you know, part one, two, and three of. Dreaming it take us too long, but uh, you can go back and uh, listen to these videos, and I suggest that you do. 
Uh, my wife knows very well that uh, back in the day, you know, we had uh, the pastors would record their sermons on cassettes. Mm -hmm. He would preach the sermon, record it on cassette. You would put a, an envelope in the offering and you would pay for the tape. I think it was $2 back then. You put a $2 offering for the tape and then the next Sunday that you came back, there was a little basket and you pick up the tapes that you had ordered. Well, I couldn't wait for next Sunday and I would pick up the tape and I tell you, I'd listen to it like it was a number one song mm -hmm. uh, in the radio. And I truly believe that listening to the word a lot really, really helps mm -hmm. you. Amen. Yes. Amen. It and did me. I know that. Well, folks, um, you that have joined us, don't go away. Stay on. And Bishop is going to bring you a tremendous uh, word on dreams. And this is uh, the series. So you can find the other series on Bish under Bishop and, Past uh, Bishop and Pastor Denteria. Amen. You'll be able to find the other ones there. So I'm going to go ahead and say an opening prayer. Amen. And Hallelujah. then I'm going to dismiss myself so Bishop can continue with his teaching. Amen. Praise Let us pray. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, I just thank you for this morning, Father. And I thank you, Father, that that all things, Father, are in you, Lord. And I ask that you give us wisdom and understanding as we hear the word. Yes. I ask that you, that it will be a seed to our spirit and that uh, we will grow, Father, in the wisdom of your word. So, Father, I speak the blessing and I yes, speak an yes. anointing to go forth in the name of Jesus. And God's people say, Amen, Amen. Amen and Amen. Amen, Praise amen. The Lord. Well, thank amen. you, guys. I'll see you later towards the end of the teaching. Amen. Thank you, honey. Praise the Lord. Uh, we are teaching part four on dreams. Amen. Now, we get our teaching uh, from the book of Job, uh, chapter four, and I'm going to read the scriptures uh, in a little while. But uh, Job is the oldest book of the Bible. Uh, they say, sc Bible scholars say that when Moses wrote Genesis, when Moses wrote, wrote the first five books of the law, that Job had already been uh, written, so that is pretty crazy. So Job is before any anything that was written. It's the oldest book in the Bible. Amen. And we praise the Lord for the oldest book in the Bible, which is Job, because in Job chapter 4, uh, his friend Eli Eliphaz has a dream, and it is through this dream that Eliphaz really begins to tell Job, uh, you have sinned, my friend, because I had a dream. And Eliphaz describes what he dreamed about, and he tells Job exactly what the Spirit told him in the dream. I bless the Lord uh, with all my soul because uh, he, this scripture is written here, you know, for us to learn and to understand. Uh, there's many other scriptures where the prophets of God dream dreams, but this one goes into very good detail. Uh, and not only that, it speaks about uh, how a demonic spirit will move on people. Amen. And that's why I love uh, this scripture so much. Let us go to Job chapter 4, verses 12 to 17. If you want me to uh, uh, email you the notes, please uh, send me an email with your email address and I'll email you the notes. Uh, if you don't want my notes, then also email me and tell me, Bishop, uh, I don't want your notes, and that's fine. Uh, another thing for those of you who are uh, uh, we're going to be doing this for the first time, uh, I don't solicit any money from anybody. I don't you know, email you three months, two months. I'm not going to email you two months from now and say, we're in need. I don't work that way. We do pray and ask God's people to help, but we do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? For Him to speak to His people. So don't worry about that. Amen? If you have any questions concerning the teaching of today, uh, send me an email, send me the question, and I will try my best uh, to... Okay, we're having problems here. No, we're good? Okay. Uh, so send me an email. And I will uh, uh, answer the question to the best of my ability. Amen. But please uh, stick to the subject at hand. Don't ask me, you know, where did God come from? <laughs> what a text. I'm going to email you back because I have no idea where God came from. Amen. So let us go into the word. Hallelujah. Job chapter 4, verse 12. Or Eliphaz is telling Job this dream. Remember that he had three friends. And I've said before, with friends like that, who needs the devil? He says, A word was secretly brought to me, 
uh, my ear received a whisper of it, and the disquieting thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falls on men. And then he continues in verse 14, and he says, Fear came upon me, and trembling, which made all my bones shake. Then, oh man, blessed be the Holy Spirit for writing this. Wow. Then, he says, a spirit passed before my face. The hair of my body stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern its appearance. A form was before my eyes. Wow, a form. There was silence. Then I heard a voice saying, now the Spirit is speaking to Job, how through a whisper, when, when deep sleep falls upon men, that's what uh, Eliphaz is saying, now the Spirit is going to speak to uh, Eliphaz here. Can a mortal be more righteous than God? Can a man be purer than his maker? So this demonic spirit speaks to Eliphaz, and Eliphaz is encouraged and is strengthened, and he becomes more bold and, uh, and more aggressive concerning what Brother Job was going, to, was going through. At the end of the book, God rebukes Eliphaz and his two friends, but only Eliphaz's name is mentioned. Uh, God is very upset with him, and he tells Job at the end of, of, of the book of Job that Job must sacrifice for his friends or else they're going to get it. And God mentions Eliphaz by name. So he was the leader. He was the one in charge. He was the one that felt like he had more authority than uh, the other three. Well, there's really four, uh, Elihu, but he's mentioned way back uh, at, at, the, at, at the end of the book of Job. And so here he uses this dream. This information, he uses it against Job. And Eliphaz says to Job, Really? A spirit came to me, passed by my face. It stood up. I could see the form of it. I didn't know what it was. And then I heard a voice, and it told me, Can a mortal man be more righteous than God? Can a man be purer than his maker? This is incredible because before anything was written, before Moses wrote the five books of the law, of the Bible, before all that, God was already, uh, uh, was already telling people, people already knew, wow, that demonic spirits could move through you and influence you in dreams. Amen? It, it, was, it had to be pretty common. Eliphaz didn't freak out. Eliphaz didn't say, my God, what is going on? Eliphaz knew exactly what had happened. He understood that a spirit had passed through his face, and he understood exactly what this evil spirit has whispered in his ear against Job. This is incredible because even back then and whenever the book of Job was written or whenever his life existed, people were already dreaming, folks. They were already dreaming through negative demonic spirits and I'm sure that God was also speaking through them in dreams, you know. Uh, but this is incredible. So here we see uh, a beautiful example on how the demonic spirits move against Christians when they go to sleep. I tell people, look, I'm telling you, the most dangerous time of a Christian's life is not when you're driving your car or when you're at the mall or you're somewhere. Why? Because you're alert. You're looking and when you see something that is, that is dangerous, or something that doesn't uh, that you don't feel good, you you back up and you go, okay, what's what's going on here? You begin to investigate. We get home and we lock our doors and our houses. We have security cameras. We have an alarm in the car and we beep it at night. And before we go to bed, what do you do? I know you do this because I do it all the time. My dad did it all the time, and I'm sure his dad did it all the time. Well, you go around the house and you make sure the doors are locked and, you know, you make sure everything is fine because you're going to go to sleep. But let me ask you this. Where is the alarm? Where is the alarm? Where is the spiritual alarm that you have to, to be alert, to wake you up, to, to, to help you understand there's a demonic spirit moving in my dreams? See, we need to understand that this is a very dangerous time for a Christian. 
for believers because the enemy uses our ignorance. Bible says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. What is knowledge? Understanding. We don't understand how the devil works. We don't understand how demonic spirits work and how they manipulate us through the day. And then sometimes at night, then they come in the middle of the night when deep sleep falls upon us and they begin to do their thing. And there we are. Sometimes Christians don't even have a clue of what happened. See, if a robber comes and, and breaks into your house or they steal something, you go outside and you go, man, what happened to my bicycle? Uh, what happened to this? What happened to that? You know, because in the natural, you see things that, are, that were there that you owned are no longer there. So you know, well, somebody came in the night and stole my stuff. Well, how do you know then? How do you know in the spiritual, when the enemy comes in and steals and kills and destroys? Those very things that Father wants to help you with, or those very things that you're praying for. That you're praying for. And he comes to what? To steal kill and to destroy. Now, let me just say this. We're not telling you that every dream is demonic. Of course not. In our first teaching, we gave the example that Paul says there are three spirits in the book of Corinthians. The spirit of man, the spirit of God, and the spirit of the world, which is demonic spirits. Of course not. Sometimes you dream just of your own fears and insecurities. Sometimes you have dreams of God, and sometimes you have dreams of the devil. Now, I know that many people will tell you this. Uh, well, you know, I don't, I don't even remember my dreams. Well, why not? Why not? If the Holy Spirit speaks to people in dreams, why would you not want to remember any of your dreams? You must make a conscious effort and begin to say, Now, why am I not dreaming? Or, forgive me, why am I not remembering my dreams? Amen? Uh, many times, I'll get up in the morning, and I'll, you know, it, it, it takes you, what, a, you know, a few minutes to wake up when you when just, the alarm rings, and you go, my God, what time is it? And you get up, and you're disoriented, you know, what day is it? And then, you know, after a few minutes of just waking up, you begin to say, oh, today's Sunday, it's, it's six o'clock, you know, this and that, I have to do all that, right? But once you initially get away from that step, and then you feel negative, you feel sour, you feel horrible, you must ask yourself, wow, what happened? You know, I didn't have a fight with my husband, I didn't have a fight with my wife, the kids are okay, you know, the bills are paid, there was no major accidents or, or, no, or major catastrophes that came into my life. Now, if there is something that's come into your life that a catastrophe or, or, or something that really hurt you and something did happen, then you have every right to wake up feeling that way. Of course, you know. Uh, I remember that some months ago I spent all this time walking up, you know, up and down the ladder because I was painting the church. And man, I, I woke up one morning, I couldn't move, my legs wouldn't move, you know, and I thought, oh man, I know what's going on, I've been doing too much of the ladder climbing, you know, and I had to get up and walk slowly, and you know, I took some pain medication, and I said, I need to chill out, because, you know, I'm hurting big time. See, that was, that was, uh, that's a good example, something did happen to cause me to feel that way, but how many of you? are waking up in the morning and feeling like a truck ran over you and everything's okay. How many of you are waking up in the morning feeling tired and depressed and angry and frustrated and you go, man, I tell you, good Lord, you know, what a day, what kind of a day am I going to have? You must ask yourself and say, what's going on? And then you must ask the Holy Spirit to help you. He is the helper. Amen? Did Job believe what Eliphaz said to him? No. Job said, look, I know you had a dream and a demonic, he didn't say demonic spirit, but he said an evil spirit, excuse me, a spirit passed by. He said, I have not sinned. I am righteous before the Lord. Eliphaz, 
uh, and the other three friends, and the other two friends were convinced that Job had sinned. Amen? So, there are two reasons why believers are attacked by demons through dreams. Two reasons. Number one, the believers are establishing the kingdom of Yahweh. Number one, the believer is establishing the kingdom of Yahweh. This is what Paul says in Acts 14. In Acts 14, he says they're ministering, they're praying, they're praying for people. Jesus already uh, 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 filled them with the power of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. The church is growing and multiplying and there's persecution and there's, and there's travail against the church. And Paul says this to, his, to the rest of the disciples in Acts 14. He says, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. The word tribulation means pressure. Pressure. Paul says, with many, with much pressures, do we enter the kingdom of God. So, if the enemy is attacking you in your dreams, it is because you're probably establishing the kingdom of God. You're trying your best to walk in the Spirit. You're trying your best under the power of His Holy Spirit to pray, to walk in the Spirit, to read the Word, to say no to temptation, to say no to those things you see that are not, that are not good for you. Uh, and all the evil, you say, no, no, no. Somebody asked me, how long, how many, how long do you spend, how much time do you spend saying no? I said, my God, sometimes it's all day because it's all around you. Now, there are times when I get up and bless the Lord. He gives me a break. He helps me. And, but there are times that I tell my wife, uh-oh, we're going into some tribulation here because, man, these voices and these things and the dream I had last night are really, really coming against us. Why? Because we're establishing the kingdom. What is the second reason? People open the door to the demon. People open the door to demons. Amen. The Bible says in John 13 that Satan entered Judas. Wow. What happened? In John chapter 6, Jesus says to them, I've chosen you 12. And he asked the question, and one of you is a devil. Well, who was the devil that Jesus was talking about in John chapter 6? Judas. The Bible says he would take from the treasure box uh, money. You know, he had some serious issues. So why is it that the, that the devil attacked him to, uh, to betray Jesus? Well, because he opened the door. Now, you don't find in the scripture where it says that Judas had a dream. But I guarantee you, I'm willing to bet my life if we could go and study the life of Judas. I guarantee you that he had plenty of dreams. Plenty of dreams. And he opened the door to the devil. So, this is what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. He said, For what credit is there when you are beaten uh, for your faults? He says, You take it patiently, but when you, do, when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. What he's saying is, look, if you're going to make mistakes, you're going to get beaten. You, you, you know, you don't, go re you don't get rewarded for that. But if you're going to walk in your integrity before God and walk patiently before God, then God is going to bless you and commend you. So Peter understands and he understood, right, that there are two reasons why demonic spirits attack Christian. One, you're establishing the kingdom of God. You're walking in righteousness. You're walking to the best of your ability in the things of God. Two, you're opening the door to the devil. You're opening the door to the devil. Amen? Point number two. Believers open the door to demons, but what they see and hear during their day-to-day -day activities. Here's a scenario. The normal Christian. They go to work, they watch TV, go to work, watch TV, maybe go out and eat, go to work, watch TV, go to work, watch TV, and then on Sunday morning, they put on the Sunday morning cap. All right, let me put my Sunday morning cap. And then as they're coming to church, they still don't have the Sunday morning cap because they're negative and angry and the husband is mad at the wife, the wife is mad at the husband. There's all this turmoil going on. You know, somebody said, somebody called it the silence of the lamb. Oh my God. 
And then what happens? We get to church and as soon as we open the door, we put on the Sunday cap. Hey, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Amen. Woohoo. Hallelujah. Well, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to put on the cap every day. I wear my ring, wedding ring, every day. I have another ring that I wear when I work. I don't like to wear my nice wedding ring, but I have another ring that I put on. Every day I put it on. Why? Because it is a symbol of my marriage to my wife. And it tells everybody else around me, I'm married. I am married. I am a married man. See, I have the symbol here. And you and I need to understand that it is our day-to-day -day stuff that the enemy uses to attack us in the middle of the night. You can't be watching horror movies, folks. You can't be watching sexual perversion. You can't be watching all this junk and then in the middle of the night say, well, it was just a movie. Oh, it's going to influence you. It's going to influence you. Who do you talk to on Facebook? What do you watch on the internet? Who are your friends? Who are you dealing with? All these situations are going to influence you. And that's why you need to understand at the end of the night, you need to go, okay, now what happened? And you know what? I do that all the time. It doesn't take forever. That's a lie of the devil. It doesn't take forever to go through your day. It does not take forever. You can do it quick under the power of the Holy Spirit. And then as you begin to go, oh man, I had this interaction with these people. Oh man, I thought this early in the morning. Oh man, I saw this horrible show. Oh man, I thought about this. I thought about that. Then you understand that's what the enemy can use against you. Whatever you are seeing through the day, whatever you are dealing through the day, whatever things are going on, then if it's sin, if it's evil, guess what it's going to attract? Exactly, it's going to attract demons because now we're opening the door. Amen. This is what Proverbs chapter 4 says. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Another translation says be careful about what you think. Wow. Your thoughts run your life. That is incredible. Now let me add this to the Word of God, or forgive me, let me say my translation. Be careful of what you think about, because your thoughts are going to be used against you by a demonic spirit in the middle of the night. That's exactly what happens. And that's why we need to be alert. And that's why Proverbs says, this is Solomon, the wisest dude in the entire world, you know, according to Jesus and many other uh, prophets, you know, many other books of the Bible. He said, you better guard your heart and you better be careful what you think about because it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to run your life. And I may add to it, like I said earlier, and you better watch what you see also. Because whatever you see, whatever you hear throughout the day, guess what? You go to bed and that's going to be used against you. Wow, who's going to use it against you? God, no. If you ask God for forgiveness, He'll forgive you. Who uses it against you? Demonic spirits, as this, as this demonic spirit did against Eliphaz. He had heard that Job was suffering. He had heard that Job was going through hell. He lost his kids. He lost his cows, camels, sheep. He lost everything. He had heard all that. And guess what happens? He goes to sleep and a demonic spirit flows through him to what? To help Job? To uplift Job? No. To accuse him. To accuse Job and to say to Job, you are a sinner. How can you be purer than your maker? How dare you say that you do not sin? Wow. Crazy. Well, that's what they said about Jesus. And the Bible says he was sinless. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. So we understand that. That we open the door demons and we close the door so then what are you supposed to do here you are you're walking through the day you know you see something you're a man you see a woman you go ho ho oh man you better repent you're a woman and you see a man and you go ho ho you better repent um, if you're married of course if you're single well even then be careful but if you're married you know, or you get angry at somebody and you want, you know, and you think, man, if it wasn't against the law, you'd be six feet under. Or you attack somebody or you say something, you, you got to be careful because that stuff is going to be used by the power of the devil. 
Amen. The believer must, point number three, the believer must guard their hearts and minds through communion with the Holy Spirit. Through communion with the Holy Spirit. And see, many people say, well, I believe in God. And I say, okay, so what does that mean? You know, it's like you will talk to many couples who are not married and you go, um, when are you guys going to get married? And they go, well, we're waiting. We're waiting for this and that and this and that. And you go, well, do you believe in getting married? Do you believe in marriage? Oh, we believe in getting married, but they never do get married. What does that tell you? Exactly. Exactly right. So then you must understand, right, that, uh, that the believer must guard their hearts and their minds through communion with the Holy Spirit. This is what Paul says. The grace of the Lord in 2 Corinthians chapter 13. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit will be with you. The word communion means to fellowship. It means to join in participation. It means to make contact. You cannot overcome the devil. Not even when you're awake. Let me just say that. But we're teaching on dreams. You cannot overcome devils. You cannot overcome demonic spirits if you are not having communion with the Holy Spirit. I didn't say believe. James says, really, you believe? That's good. Even demons believe so much and they tremble. I've mentioned this many times before. Folks, the devil is not an atheist. If there's anybody who believes in God, if there's anybody who believes in the Holy Spirit, if there's anybody who believes in the Son of the living God, Jesus Christ our Lord, it's the devil. He's not an atheist. So when people say, well, I believe, and I believe that, you know, people should exercise. Well, do I have a exercise membership at a gym? No. Do I walk every day three miles? Uh, no. Do I run? No. But I believe that exercise is good for the body. Amen. How many people, you know, that uh, uh, weigh 500 pounds, you know, talk about this and talk about that and how to lose weight and how to lose this? Well, do they believe? They believe in that eating right? Yes. But do they do it? No. So believing in the devil doesn't mean nothing. Excuse me, believing in God doesn't mean anything. Believing in God doesn't mean anything. You must show works, and that's what James says. Faith without works is dead. You must have communion with the Holy Spirit. And I thought my wife had taken this scripture from my notes, because this is what she opened with. Philippians 4, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. 1 Peter 1 says, Therefore, guard your minds and be sober. See, talking about, uh, uh, talking about uh, not drinking uh, beer or being drunk in the natural. No, he's talking about in the spiritual. Guard your minds and be sober. Don't be drunk in excess with the spirit of the world. Don't be drunk in excess with the wine of the world. What is the wine of the world? Well, whatever is sin, whatever is evil, whatever brings you away from God and pushes you away from Him. That is what he's talking about. And he says, be sober. Don't be drunk in the spirit of the world. Say, so how hard is it? Well, it is hard because we live in the world. But we're not of the world, folks. We're not of this world. Amen. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are able to overcome. We are able to succeed. Say, so, well, am I going to make any mistakes? Oh, hello. Who's not? The only one that didn't make any mistakes was, his name is Jesus. Besides that, everybody from Paul to, uh, to, to Abraham or from Abraham to Paul, they all made mistakes. And guess what? We're going to continue to make mistakes. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about that you must understand that you must guard your minds and your hearts and your minds. How do you do that? By communion with the Holy Spirit. Somebody said to me, well, you know, I find that so hard to do. And I said, well, why? They said, well, I don't know. You know, it's like, you know, I mean, it's just so hard to believe that you can have fellowship, uh, intimacy, make contact with the Holy Spirit. 
I said, do you have any dogs? They said, oh yeah, we got two dogs. I said, do you interact with them? Oh man, I love them. So you can talk to a dog. Huh? You can communicate to a dog. You can feel the dog's love. You can feel the dog's soul. But you can't hear the Holy Spirit. I smell me a devil. I smell me a devil. Amen. This is what Paul says in Colossians chapter 2. Continue in prayer and be watchful. How are you watchful? Through the power and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Through the power and the communion of the Holy Spirit. You know, I, you know I've, I've listened to songs. You know, you're on the radio and you're listening to a song and you go, wait a minute, that, that doesn't feel right. That doesn't feel right. You know, uh, this happened many, many years ago. Uh, I always hear music when I pray, right? Uh, it helps the mood and that's why God created music. And I remember that I got some new songs and I recorded them on a CD and I would play these songs. This happened, my God, I don't know, eight, ten years ago, I think. It's been a while. And uh, I would feel, you know, a certain thing in my prayer. I would feel something evil. And I would go, I would start to fight it. I'd go, no, I resist you in Jesus' name. And I would begin to quote scripture and this and that and ask the Holy Spirit to help me. Well, several weeks went by until I got it. My people perish for what? For a lack of knowledge. It took me a while to get it. But the Holy Spirit finally said to me, I finally said, Lord, can you help me? What is going on? He said, it's not that a demonic spirit is attacking you. It's that the song that you're listening to is demonic. Wow. Exactly. Exactly. So through communion with the Holy Spirit, I found out, oh my God, what I'm hearing is demonic. And then what as what happens? You go to sleep and then the enemy uses that against you. That's why he says, uh, Peter says, be sober. And Paul says, guard, God will guard your minds and your hearts. Through what? Through the communion of the Holy Spirit. If God can speak to a donkey, and he did. If God can speak to a crow, and he did. If God can speak to a whale, and he did. You mean to tell me that the Holy Spirit is not going to speak to you? You mean to tell me that the Holy Spirit is not going to speak to you? You who have been created and made in His image and His likeness? No. I smell me a devil. I smell me a devil. You say, well, I haven't been listening to any of that stuff. But if you do believe it, if you believe that, what I'm saying, that God cannot speak to you and you haven't listened to it, you know, any programs that say that, then the enemy is coming in the middle of the night and moving on you on a dream and whispering in your ear that you cannot have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. That you're too evil, you're too ugly, you're too this, you're too that, and that God doesn't listen to you, and there's no way that the Holy Spirit will speak to you. Oh, He'll speak to a dog, He'll speak to a, to a donkey, to a crow, to a well. But he will not speak to you. That is the lie of the devil. And if you're feeling that way, it's because he is attacking you in the night season. He is whispering in your ear in the middle of the night. Like Eliphaz said, when deep sleep falls upon men, a whisper came to me. And I heard a, fo I saw a form. I saw uh, a shadow. And it said this to me. I said this. I say this to everybody. Now, there's people who don't want to believe in demonic spirits. You know what? More power to you. You can believe whatever you want. It doesn't matter to me. But I'm talking to those who do believe. Who do believe. You must understand that they are demonic spirits. And you must understand that they're coming against you in the night season when you are totally asleep. And you think, well, everything is safe. The car's got the alarm. I got some surveillance cameras around the house. Uh, the doors are locked. The windows are locked. The kids are asleep. Everything's good. All right, I'm ready to go to bed because I'm tired. And then a demonic spirit moves upon you in the middle of the night when deep sleep falls upon men and they begin to whisper into your ear and you wake up in the morning and you have no earthly idea why you're feeling the way you're feeling. 
How many marriages have been destroyed by a evil spirit whispering in the middle of the night to a spouse? How many? How many people have left their church? How many people have God said, I'm going to send you to this church and that's where you need to stay until I call you home or until I come? How many people live, uh, uh, leave God's perfect will for them and their lives because of a whisper in their ear in the middle of the night? And they have no idea. They have no idea what is going on. And you think, my God, what have you been listening to? Oh, no, no, no. Man, you've been listening to people who preach against Christ? Oh, no, 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 no. Well, then why do you feel the way you feel? Because you saw something or heard something and you opened your spirit to that. And then with no communion with the Holy Spirit, guess what? You're not going to find out what's going on in here. You're not going to know. There's no way you can truly know what's going on in your heart without the power of the Holy Spirit showing you and revealing to you what is really going on in there. And it is through Him that we can guard ourselves. It is through the communion of the Holy Spirit that we can guard ourselves and all say, oh, My God, man, I thought this thought the other day and that was evil. Or I saw this thing the other day and that was not good. Or I saw this or I saw that. You say, Well, I, I don't know. Really? All you got to do if you're, a, if you're a wife, all you got to do is dream that your husband is cheating with you. Man, your husband wake, may wake up dead because of a dream. All the husband needs to do is have a dream that the wife is cheating on him. And the wife may wake up also, not alive. Why? Because of a dream. Because of a dream. And you go, well, is there any evidence? No. Oh, but they still believe it. Because a demon spirit came in the middle of the night. In the deep, deep uh, uh, sleep. And w w said whispers and said stuff to that person. And then they woke up feeling like that. So how do you guard yourself? You must have communion through the power of the Holy Spirit. You must have communion with the power of the Holy Spirit. If you don't have communion with the power of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to make it, folks. You're not. You're not going to make it. Let me just say this again. If you don't have communion with the power of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to make it. I'm talking about in your Christian walk with God. You're not going to make it. He is the source of life. He is the one that leads us unto all truth. He is the one. He is the counselor, the, the, the protector. He is the one. He is the advocate. He is the helper. I like that translation. The helper. Jesus said the helper will come. The helper for what? To help you walk in your spiritual walk with the power of the, through the power of the Holy Spirit. You need to start believing. You need to start asking the question, am I being influenced by dreams in the middle of the night and I have no earthly idea? Well, what's wrong with asking that to the spirit of truth? What's wrong with asking that? You know how many you know how Christians are? Many Christians are people who don't want to go to the doctor. You know why people don't want to go to the doctor? Because the doctor is going to say, you have this in your body. Or this is wrong with you. So they, they don't go to the doctor and they put it off and put it off and put it off and put it off. And then when they do go to the doctor, guess what? It's too late. Why? Because they were afraid to find out. If you're afraid to find out what's inside of you, if you're afraid to find out what's going on in the middle of the night through the power of the Holy Spirit, you've been dreaming and, 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 and dreaming serious demonic spirits serious demonic dreams that come in the middle of the night. No, you need to guard your mind and your soul. Amen. Point number four, the Holy Spirit will instruct the believer on what to do concerning attacks that come from demonic dreams. You know, I've, I've been told before, don't listen to that music. And I go, um, Lord, that's Christian. And I go, whoa, whoa, okay, okay, I, okay. I'll stay away from that. I'm not going to listen to that. Holy Spirit has said to me, don't watch that show. And I go, well, it, it's not. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a regular show about regular people and guns and people shooting and all that stuff. You know, it's action. That's what Netflix calls it, action. And the Holy Spirit has said to me, don't watch that movie. Don't watch that and don't watch this. Why? Because whatever 
you watch, then the enemy is going to use against you. So what is the Holy Spirit leading you? You have to pray. You have to pray. Holy Spirit, what are you leading me to do? The believer must be instructed by the Holy Spirit. He may give you instructions to read the Word. Right before you go to bed, He may tell you, I want you to read my Word. And I'm not talking about read John 3.16 and go to bed. Uh, no. No. Let me just say this to those of you who have insomnia, those of you who can't sleep, <laughs> read the Bible, see if you don't get sleepy. That's another subject. Amen? So, you pray. And you say, Holy Spirit, what do I need to do? I'm being attacked in dreams, you know, by demonic spirits. What do I do? Well, the Holy Spirit may give you the instructions to read His Word. David said, Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. There's many scriptures. The Psalms are beautiful to read. Uh, the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom. You know, it just depends what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. Or the believer may be instructed by the Holy Spirit uh, to pray. You may be given the instructions. Uh, you need to pray every night. You know, a good five minute, ten minute little prayer every night before you go to sleep. You, he may instruct you to pray for your wife, to pray for your kids, to pray for yourself. I don't know, but he will instruct you. Amen. It's not the same all the time and it's not the same for every person. So he may tell you, read the word or he may tell you, you need to do a prayer. The believer may be instructed by the Holy Spirit to quote a, a, a passage of scripture every night while you're praying. He might tell you, I want you to pray and I want you to quote, uh, you know, the scripture. You know, I want you to quote the scripture. And as you're praying, you're quoting whatever scripture the Holy Spirit spoke to you in your heart to do. And if you're saying, well, I don't know the word. My God, stop lying. Stop believing the lies of the devil. All you got to do is put one or two words on Google and say Bible verse and it'll come up. So just stop. Just stop in the name of Jesus. Amen. But God may instruct you to pray and also quote a scripture. I know that I've gone through seasons where uh, I quote Isaiah uh, 54. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And I condemn every word that rises up against me. And I prayed that. I've quoted that after prayer. So it just depends. Amen. Or the Holy Spirit may instruct you to get somebody to pray for you. Amen. The Holy Spirit may say, uh, I want you to pray for this, or uh, I mean to call for prayer. Ask for prayer from your pastor. Ask for prayer from your pastor's wife. Ask for prayer from your church. Amen. And then that's what you believe may happen. Or the Holy Spirit may instruct you to get a specific word. That's happened to me several times. I was in a park in a state park and I had gone fishing with some of the brothers and I was attacked by a demonic spirit that that lives there and that thing was just horrible one of the brothers described it as a man walking around with chains that's what he saw well that's exactly what it was it was a demonic spirit that you know moves against people uh, to bind you and I remember that as soon as I closed my eyes, man, I was in this horrible, horrible dream. Now, Bishop, what did you say you were doing? I was camping. I wasn't in Las Vegas. I was camping, fishing, you know, camping at a state park. I was fishing and camping, not in Las Vegas. And I tell you, I woke up from that horrible nightmare and I went, Lord Jesus, what and the Holy Spirit, do not, he said to me, do not be afraid. This demonic spirit is not going to penetrate your tent. Wow, a tent. You know how you sleep in tents when you camp? He said, it's not going to penetrate your tent. He said, I'm with you. And I'm telling you, uh, you know, I could see through the, through the tent, you know, uh, through the windows of the tent. You could see outside. And I'm telling you, it was dark as dark can be. Oh, my God. I went through almost all night with that thing trying to terrorize me. And every time I would go to sleep, guess what? It did affect me in my dreams, but it never came into the tent. Amen. So it was just, that's how strong it was. So I spent most of the time just reading the word and bless God that I had taken my iPad because I wanted to uh, study on a sermon that I was going to be teaching that Sunday. And I took it. Amen. I've been given instructions 
some time ago, the Holy Spirit said to me, this is the words that you're going to use when this demonic spirits move against you. Some witches uh, in the Elsa area moved against me. Uh, and there were several of them and they came together to attack me and persecute me and uh, they wouldn't leave they would appear in this dark shadowly shadow form there in the in next to my uh, bedroom window and that happened for a year folks did you hear me a year every night at 10 o'clock that power would appear and it wouldn't leave until you know until early in the morning i don't know what time and the holy spirit said to me this is what you're going to say to those powers the mountains of the lord are greater than the mountains of the enemy and i remember when the holy spirit spoke that to me and i thought what the heck what what does that mean but i've learned to trust in what the holy spirit says i've learned to trust it may not make sense to the natural brain, but I've learned to trust. And every night I would go to bed and I would raise my hands and I would say, the mountains of the Lord are greater than the mountains of the enemy. I would say that I wake up in the middle of the night and as soon as I woke up, I would say, the mountains of the Lord are greater than the mountains of the enemy. And that's how I got through that one. Right now, I'm going through another attack. There's a demonic spirit that is manifesting and it manifests at a certain time and they'll leave at a certain time. This one's scarier than the one that came to me many years ago. And it, it, it is a spirit of terror. That's what I feel, terror. And you know what the Lord said to me? He said to me, do not worry. He said, remember when you were small? And I said, yes, Lord. And remember when you used to be bullied? I said, yeah, I remember there were some kids that would bully me and take my money and all that. He said, well, I got your back. He said, this is a spirit that's going to come to try to terrorize you. But trust me, I got your back. And what do I say to this spirit when it moves and when I hear its voice or when I go to sleep and I, when I begin to dream? You know, you just you go to sleep and as soon as you close your eyes, you're in a deep nightmare. What do I say when I wake up? What do I say when I awake? What do I say when I pray? What do I say when I'm walking around, you know, mowing, doing whatever I do, and that thing is around me, speaking evil to me? I say to it, my Father has my back. My Father has my back. Yesterday morning, the demonic spirit said to me, in a dream, I was barely waking up, and the demonic spirit said to me, I'm watching you. I woke up from that dream, and I said, Father, in Jesus' name, that demonic spirit spoke to me and I said, and I pointed to that spirit and I said, you're watching me, God is watching you, I said. You must have communion with the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to tell you what, are you, what do you need to do? What do you need to do to remember your dreams? What do you need to do to fight the devil in your dreams? What do you need to do when your children are having nightmares and going through hell in the middle of the night? What do you do? You must have communion with the power of the Holy Spirit and through that communion, He will instruct you what to do. It may not make no sense to you. It might not make no sense to you at all at all but many times he's given me words you know and, and and you wake up from that dream or you're in the dream and you go lord lord jesus help me and you're able to fight against that demon in the dream sometimes you're not you wake up and as soon as you wake up you speak it no it's not going to happen i resist that dream in jesus name and that's what you need to do every time you wake up in the morning and or you wake up in the middle of the night and there's a demonic dream that came to you you say no it's not going to happen and your husband says what honey it's okay babe i'm praying your wife says what honey it's okay I, I'm, I'm praying no, it's not going to happen in Jesus' name. No, it's not going to happen. I decree that no weapon formed against me, no weapon formed against my children, no weapon formed against my ministry, no weapon formed against my finances, no weapon formed against my body is going to prosper in the name of Jesus. And you decree it in the name of Jesus. You decree whatever the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. He'll speak to you. Trust me. He'll give you something. He is the Spirit of truth. Amen. So point number four, the Holy Spirit will instruct the believer on what to do concerning attacks that come.
from demonic spirits. I hope and pray that you are uh, believing the word of the Lord. I hope and pray that you're rising up in the name of Jesus. Remember what the scripture says, the battle is the Lord's. It's not your battle. You can't defeat the devil. You and I cannot defeat demons. Demons don't sleep, don't eat, don't go on vacation. They don't do anything except wait to move upon people's evil desires or evil uh, thoughts, and that's what they do. So you're, you, you have no power. I have no power against demonic spirits. The power is the Lord Jesus Christ that lives inside in you and the, and, and the instruction that He gives you to speak it in the name of Jesus. The battle's not ours. The battle's the Lord. Amen. The battle's is the Lord. So I want you to uh, stay alert. I want you to be in prayerful mode. Uh, my wife's going to join me now. Amen. So stay alert. Pray. Amen. Uh, if you need prayer from us, you just, you know, text me, text my wife or I, and, and uh, we'll pray for you every night if we have to. But eventually, you know, uh, you will begin to win. Now, are nightmares going to stop totally? I don't, I don't think so. No, but, but it's not that they have to stop totally. It's that you need to catch them, you know. You need to catch them, you know, when they're coming. You need to understand that they're attacking you. Say, so, well, what if they're not attacking me? Well, if they're not attacking them, then you're not establishing the kingdom. You're not doing anything. You're not even a threat to them. Mm -hmm. That's why they attack, because you're a threat. Amen? So don't hesitate to text my wife or text me. Call me, send me an email, uh, and say, look, can you please pray for me? I've been having some horrible nightmares. You don't have to explain what the nightmare is about. We will pray for you. And remember, uh, we want to remind you, my wife and I keep all this confidential. Pastor Grayson. Well, that's a very interesting uh, teaching. Um, you know, I know that I'm uh, one of those persons that, you know, it's very hard for me to remember my dreams, you know. And I do ask the Lord, help me remember my dreams. But I have this heavy, deep sleeps, honey. Very heavy sleeps. And uh, sometimes I do remember, not all the time. Well, it's impossible to remember everything. So we're not, you know, when I say that, we're not telling you, you know, if you dream, you know, 10 dreams, you got to remember every dream. No, we're asking God to help us remember the evil and to help us remember the good. Yeah. The, the flesh, you're going to dream, you know, yeah. that's just your own mind. Yes, that's yeah. not a threat. Well, as you were preaching, I was thinking about myself and how it affects me, you know. So we do need to do as instructed as through the teachings, you know, so that we can be alert and we can be uh, sensitive to what is happening around us. And you know, I am a testimony. You know, I've shared before that I was seeing shadows and dreaming stuff when I was eight years old, man. Yeah. You know, and for many years I saw that stuff and, you know, and it's just craziness now, you know, uh, that I'm a believer and been walking with God a lot of years. Now I understand, wow, this is what's going on. You know, uh, but the Bible says for uh, believers are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, for a lack of understanding. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're trying our best to give you as much understanding as we can to help you fight against the enemy. Yes, amen, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, don't Any forget, other words? no, uh, I'm just asking for you to keep me up in your prayer, so I'm feeling under the weather. It's not COVID. <laughs> It's my sinuses and my allergies. <laughs> I can feel uh, my body finding a, a sinus infection or something. I read this post from a, yeah. from a guy that said, man, every time I get a little itch in my throat, yeah. he goes, is it COVID? <laughs> I said, man, don't think that way. <laughs> Amen. No, don't think that way because, my God, no. It's a little itch is just sinuses. Yeah. Amen. The, your sinuses are draining and they're affecting your throat. Yes. <laughs> thought well, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't receive any uh, prayer requests. Now, I do want to remind you, send them before 9 o'clock. Uh, we have gotten some right at 10 o'clock in the morning, and uh, that's when we're starting our videotaping, so we're not going to see them. And so that means we're not going to be praying for your request. But if, we, if you do send them late, we will uh, pray for you later after we're done recording. You know, we'll bring you before the throne of God. Amen. So, but um, other than that, don't forget to um, send your request in before nine o'clock in the morning. 
So uh, we can go ahead and pray for you during our live streaming. Or the night, sermon. Be or the night before. Or the night before. Exactly. I do wanna before I forget, babe. Babe, mm -hmm. uh, we do wanna thank Sister Yvette. Uh, she uh, brought us her uh, yes. offering yesterday. Yesterday, babe. Friday. Today's Sunday, Friday, right? Friday. Friday. She brought us her offering Friday, and with the offering, she bought uh, some uh, Mexican food. And I thought, oh my God. So, uh, you know, it was very good. Thank you, Sister Yvette. Uh, I put a picture on Facebook. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's been a while since you know, <laughs> anybody brought us. But it was delicious. Lunch like that. that. Thank you. But, uh, <laughs> man, I was so blessed. And I want to thank Sister Yvette uh, because uh, it touched my heart, Sister Yvette. And, uh, yeah. Wow, I just, yeah, well, it's just a meal. Well, you know what Jesus said? If you give a drink of water to one of my servants, you will receive a reward even for that. So may the Lord reward you, Sister Yvette, for your tithes and offerings and for bringing uh, mm -hmm. lunch uh, to Pastor Gracie and I. Yeah. When I was... Uh, they were delicious. Uh, oh, man. Let me just tell you that I was humming as I was eating. <laughs> when I was... Uh, <laughs> When I was uh, a member of our church up in, uh, uh, in Houston, uh, I would have days off during the week because I worked Saturday and Sunday. Uh, I, would, I would sell retail. I sold refrigerators and screen TVs, you know, like a, like a Best Buy store. And when I was off, I would always go to this uh, store there in the city and they sold chick, uh, uh, not chicken plates, food, right? They had steak and you know, you could buy a plate and I would always buy three, four plates and take him to my pastor uh, for lunch. And uh, I remember that I did that for quite some time. You know, and, and, and I would get thoughts, babe. You know, well, you're gonna disturb him. Well, you know, maybe he's not hungry. He doesn't like the food, but I never gave him to those thoughts because I knew that my pastor would either eat it for lunch or eat it for dinner. And uh, that blessed me tremendously. So thank you, Sister Yvette. We do appreciate Amen. that Amen. from uh, the bottom of our hearts. Yes. Amen. Amen. Anything else, honey? No, I have nothing else. Are we going to pray for needs? Or we're going to pray, gonna... uh, I, I guess, a general, a general prayer. Global I do want to. I do want to yes. pray a general prayer, but after you uh, finish with your uh, okay. with your petitions. Amen. Let's Amen. pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, Father, we come to you this morning, Father. We ask, Father, that you touch the hearts of your saints, the hearts of your children, and yes, those that hallelujah. are listening, Father. Father, I thank you, Father, that you are so merciful, Father, and your grace abounds. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you uh, have heard the prayers of the saints as they come before the, your throne, Father. Yes. As they are in the golden bowl before your throne, Father. Yes. Lord, the prayers of the saints are a sweet aroma to you, Lord. And Father, I ask, Father, that those that have been praying, Father, Father, I bind that demonic spirits that are holding their prayers. I bind them in the name of Jesus. And Father, I declare, Father, that a, a path uh, will allow the prayers, Father, to reach your throne, Father, now in the name of Jesus, Yes, Lord. hallelujah. And Father, we pray, Father, that they shall receive an answer, Lord. Just as, uh, you know, as they pray, Father, and they, those prayers travel, Father, I pray that those answers will come back to them yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes. And Father, we declare, Father, we declare, Father, that anyone that is anxious, anyone that is worried, Father, anyone that is dreaming dreams and can't remember, Father, I ask, Father, that you bring revelation to them in the name of Jesus, Lord. Open up their ears, Father, so they can hear and open up their eyes so they can see, Father. And Lord, we ask, Father, that you're Holy Spirit will go in there, Father, and give them the wisdom that they need to understand what the Lord is saying, what's going on in the Spirit, and to fight back in the name of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We uh, again remind you that if you want to help us, uh, now that we're having online services, you can help us by sharing uh, our video and our teaching to your friends, and we do appreciate that. Amen. Uh, we're going to pray. I'm going to pray uh, a prayer of strength uh, to everybody who has gone through some, mm -hmm. through some hard times mm -hmm. this month or this week or last night or mm -hmm. several months ago. Yes. That's what I'm going to pray for. And then I'm going to give you the Lord's blessing from Numbers chapter 6. Mm -hmm. Raise, yes, extend your hands yeah. to the screen and believe. Yes, Father. Father, I release yes, Father. the power of your Holy yes. Spirit. 
And I strengthen every believer right now through the power of your Holy Spirit. I strengthen every believer that is hurting right now. I strengthen every believer that is crying out to you right now. I strengthen every believer that is going through a trial right now in the name of Yeshua. I speak strength to their mind. I speak strength to their heart and I speak strength to their body. I decree in Jesus name that whatever whatever believers are going through right now it will not hurt them in Jesus name it will not deter them from seeking your face in Jesus name it will not stop them from believing in the grace and the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ I speak right now to every person who is connected to us and every person that is going to see us in the future I speak a strength be strengthened in your mind will and emotions in your body and in your spirit I speak this in the name of Yeshua be strengthened in the name of the Lord amen I'm gonna leave you now with numbers chapter 6 uh, this is what uh, God said to Moses to tell Aaron on how to bless the people this is number 6 if you want to remember it Numbers chapter 6, verse 24, 25, and 26. Amen? Numbers chapter 6, 24, 25, and 26. And Aaron blessed the people of Israel this way. The Lord bless you, and the Lord keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you, and the Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you, and the Lord give you His peace. We pray this in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Monday, my wife does her Bible study at 8 o'clock. Wednesday, I'm going to start a new series uh, at 7.30. Amen. God bless you. We love you in the name of the Lord. And believe that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Bye-bye.